Hi everyone, I'm Eric Fritz with INE Technologies. We're a reliability equipment supplier specializing in vibration, ultrasound, infrared alignment, uh, motor circuit analysis, as well as many other PDM technologies. Uh, we also supply training uh, for the implementation of all of our products, which is the reason for our video series. Uh, if you have any feedback or any other product videos you'd like us to cover, feel free to reach out to us at any time. You can find us at our website, www.ietechnologiesllc.com. Uh, if you have any interest in the products that we're supplying, we can also help with that. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the video. Here's the body of our T540 infrared camera from FLIR. It's identical to our T530 camera uh, and uh, is a direct replacement for our T420, 440, and 460 cameras uh, with a much larger screen on it. Uh, getting right into the camera, on the bottom here we have our battery latch. It's going to be a little bit different style than our T400 series. You got a button on the front and back you push together to pull the battery out and a click when it goes all the way in. On the bottom we have an SD card, uh, SD card slot and our HDMI output or communications connection there. Uh, on the lenses themselves, uh, again just like our EXX cameras, we have an auto cal lens feature which essentially means that you can get additional lenses with the camera um, or without the camera and have them calibrated to the camera without having to send the camera and the lens back to the factory. Uh, to remove the lens you have two little lines here, a white and a black one. Uh, all we're going to do to remove it is take a quarter turn on the ring and pull it apart to remove the, the lens itself to bring it back on. Again, it's just the opposite. Make sure the black and white lines are lined up. This here is our manual focus mechanism similar to our other cameras that we have. On the front portion of the camera we have our tripod mount. And this is going to be a little bit different than our T400 series cameras. We used to have a gray circular button for auto focusing and image capture. We've now separated them into two separate buttons because we had issues, uh, a lot of our users had issues with trying to differentiate what an autofocus was versus image capture. Um, so to, to avoid that, we, we separated into two buttons. Our top button here is our autofocus. The camera itself also has a continuous autofocus feature that can, can be turned on on the camera. I'll get into later in the video. And then here is our image capture on the bottom. Uh, this is our first camera that we can actually manipulate 180 degrees, which is a lot different than our EXX uh, series cameras or any of our T series cameras thus far. Here we have the screen of our T540 camera. I'm going to go briefly over some of the button pushing and then get into the menu options later on in the video. Uh, but Right off the bat here we have our on off button on the camera. This is a back button or an escape key. Uh, so if we get into the menu options, we want to back out, we hit that back button. And then our up and down, left and right, center select toggle uh, is for selecting menus and options on the camera. So we can also do that by touching the screen here and bringing up menus and selecting whatever it is that we want and then backing out by touching the screen. Or I can select by hitting the button up top and then backing out of it. Um, it can be nice to, to have both options if you have gloves on or dirty fingers and you want to get your, your uh, four inch screen uh, dirty. Uh, going from top to bottom and left to right, our P button here on the top left is a programmable button. We have two of these on our T500 series cameras. That's basically a custom shortcut key. So uh, it's designed for each user's preference. Uh, if we want to set something on that menu, we're going to hold the P button down until that circle on the center of the screen makes a full loop. And then it gives us a handful of different options that we can select between from single shot to video, different color palettes, temperature ranges. I personally like the temperature range. Uh, if I'm shooting something that's a little higher temp, I can switch my temp range without having to go into the settings menu. Again, uh, zoom is another feature, image modes, so on and so forth. And to get back out of here, we're going to hit that back button. If we wanted to select uh, to set our P button, we're just going to hit what we want and it'll automatically set our programmable button. Mine is already set on the camera. The next button over is our playback. So if we want to view the images and videos stored on the SD card, we just hit that play button. 
The other feature of that is if you hold that down for longer than a second, it will do a non-uniformity correction or an instantaneous calibration on the camera, uh, which can be key if you're switching temperature ranges and you want to uh, ramp up the speed of your uh, calibration um, so that your readings can be uh, more reliable quicker, you can hit that button for longer than a second. Um, on the bottom part of the screen, we have a couple different options as well. Uh, the bottom left one is to be uh, to open up our image folder. So where the images are stored on our camera, if we tap that, it'll show our folders. I have a few dummy uh, demo folders made up here. Uh, and you can see over here it says active. That just sim simply means that folder has been selected so that the images that I'm taking on the camera will automatically store in that folder. Um, I'll get into that a little bit later in the video, but uh, that's the, the the purpose of the, the folder shortcut key on the front of the, the camera. Our next portion over is our lamp. Tap that on and off. Uh, next one over, it says AF-C if you can see that. Uh, it's an autofocus to continuous autofocus feature on the camera. As I mentioned earlier, you have a manual focus mechanism uh, as well as an autofocus mechanism. Well, this will allow you to continuously autofocus as you scan a plant. You don't need to put hit any buttons on the camera and it will automatically focus for you. You can turn that on and off um, just by tapping the screen. That can also be one of the settings in our programmable buttons as well. Uh, the next button over is to hide our overlay or our graphics on the screen. If we wanted to view the components and just see a nice clear image, uh, we can hide all our, our uh, graphics on the screen. Our next one over here is our auto to manual temperature scale adjustment. So as I tap that, now I can go on the screen and toggle up and down to widen my range or tighten my range to create more thermal contrast on our image. If I want to back out of that and get back to our autofocus or switch down to the bottom, as you can see I can toggle between the two or I can switch back to my auto, focus, or auto uh, temperature range by tapping that button again. Another neat feature on the T500 series that's just been added you tap that button and go to manual focus and then you tap a, a portion on the screen it will automatically set your level and span based on your point of interest so if I see a hot spot here on a connection and I hold that button down it'll automatically adjust based on the point that I hit on there so you can see that my temperature uh, on the top end and bottom end change based on the component I was looking at if I tap something out here it will automatically adjust to that. Again, that's not a, a very good image. So if I tap back onto here, it will automatically set that scale again for me. Now we're gonna get into our menu options on our T540 camera. This can be done either by ta tapping the uh, center part of the screen or getting into our menus by tapping the select button up here. I'm gonna use the touch screen for now. Uh, starting on our left, we have our recording modes. We can go from single shot to video to time lapse as you move over. Uh, the nice part about the video feature um, is it actually has the ability to, to record radiometric video. So if we record a video and want to extract live data filled images from that or radiometric images from a video file, we can do that on board our T500 and EXX series cameras, uh, which again is a nice feature for, for a number of applications. I'm going to stay on our single shot as I move over to our next menu, which is some of our measurement parameters or atmospheric corrections that can be made. Um, if I start on the far right, this is where our emissivity adjustment, adjustment is made. This can be done in the software as can all of the different parameters within here. Um, but if you want to set it, 0.95 emissivity is a pretty standard setting on board the cameras and actually how your camera will come default from the factory. Um, a lot of these other options can be adjusted um, within the software, again, if you'd want to, or do it on the camera if you'd like. The other thing on the far left here, we have an external IR window compensation. This can be turned on and off if we're looking through an IR optic through a piece of switch gear or MCCs if you had the uh, the application call for it. Uh, if we wanted to turn that on and off, we can just slide up and down. I'm gonna leave mine off, but the next uh, set of numbers over is gonna be for our optic temperature, and then on the far right is our transmission rate, as there is a loss through any optic. If I hit the back button here, it'll take me down to my next menu. 
which is our image modes. We're in a standard thermal image mode. If we record an image now, it will store both an infrared and a digital image at the same time. We also have the capability to do a thermal MSX, which is a patented technology, which overlays the infrared with the digital image and shows some detail from both images. So you can actually get breaker numbers, uh, nameplate information off of a motor, uh, different things like that will actually show up on your infrared image. Um, very key feature to have if you don't have a lot of thermal contrast on the image. Uh, another feature that is also nice for that kind of application is picture-in-picture. Picture. We have our infrared image here in the center and digital around the outside. Um, also just kind of a neat little option for you. You have a few more options within the software, but on board the camera, here's your only four that you can select from. And our far right one is going to be our digital image. Again, no need to do that because our standard images are stored with a digital image. Next menu over is some of our spot temperatures that we can um, use on board the camera. If we want a clean screen here. This is our no measurement uh, selection. Our next one over is a center spot. So this is actually going to display the temperature in the top left portion of the screen. Uh, our next one over is a very, very key feature for a lot of people. Uh, it's a hot spot detection box, which will automatically jump to the hottest thing that the camera sees in the box, which can be resized at any point or moved over. And all it's doing simply is jumping to the hottest spot in the box and displaying that temperature. So if you're looking for hot spots on a motor or in an MCC, for example, it will automatically jump to that and display that. Uh, we can also set alarms based on those parameters. So if we want to set um, either an emissivity or a certain alarm um, in the box only, we can go along and change some of these things. So here's our alarm feature. Basically, if, you know, if we're going to have a, an alarm threshold, we can go into above and our temperature, whatever that may be, we can go to say 100 and 230 degrees because that's what it stopped on. I can have a sound, which would be a beep on the camera or no sound at all. So it'll just flash red if we have an alarm threshold exceeded. Um, I'm going to leave this off because otherwise it's going to be flashing at me during the, uh, the video. But each spot has the capability of, of having an alarm um, on the camera. Our next menu over on our spots is our cold spot detection. Used a lot in refrigeration uh, or looking for cold air leaks. Uh, this will automatically jump to the coldest spot in the box and display that temperature. We can also, in, in the camera, uh, in this box, add a hot spot, cold spot, and an average. So this is actually going to give us the highest, lowest, and the average in the box. And again, as we resize that, that average will change as will our max and min. I'm going to deselect all those, otherwise we're going to have a, a bunch of scattered data on the screen. Um, in the spot menu, we also have a couple custom preset um, settings for our spot temperature. So our first one, we can set it to whatever we want. And that would be done by just holding this button down. And then it'll allow us to pick some of the measurements that we want. If I hold it down, it'll ask me if I want to add a spot or a box or a delta or a circle. All of those things can be done from the camera. I'm going to back out of here because I have three connection uh, spot temperatures set up already as a preset on my camera. The next one over is just a second option for that. Uh, you can add multiple boxes to the screen if you wanted to or spots and boxes. Uh, again, just really depends on your user preference. I'm going to back out of this. And our next one over is our color palettes. Uh, we have about six on the camera. On the top portion of the screen here, iron, rainbow are some of the most popular. A lot of people like the white hot. Um, and it just really just depends on who's looking at the camera, what you've been brought up in infrared on. Uh, I personally like uh, our rainbow palette and an iron palette, uh, but there are a lot of times where I think that a white hot actually shows a better contrast uh, when I'm looking at an image. So I use a little bit of everything. Uh, on the bottom here, we have some alarms or again very much like a, uh, an isotherm feature uh, and what we can do on here is set an isotherm so if we have uh, for example we want to know and anytime something is over 100 degrees I can go up here 
and slide this up to about 100 degrees, we probably won't see much of anything. But if I go up to 100 or roughly thereabout, it will only show me things that are about 100 degrees. And it'll show it in red. Anything below and above that will show up black and white. Um, used heavily in search, uh, search and rescue and first response for the drones. Um, so people looking for somebody in the woods, they can set a user preference um, alarm threshold based on whatever object they're trying to see. So as, as we move that alarm, you can see that things are showing up red. Uh, again, kind of a neat feature to have on the camera. I'm going to go in here and just set it back to our standard iron pallet. And then I'm going to go back to a center spot on my camera. Um, the next menu over is our settings menu, and I will be covering that shortly. Before we get into the settings options uh, a little bit farther, we're going to go over our zoom feature on the camera. And much like our cell phones and our tablets, uh, if we want to zoom in on something, just spread your fingers apart on the, the image or a way to zoom out. Um, and also, if we slide the screen down, much like a cell phone, it has our Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, our screen rotation, so it's going to auto-orientate based on the, side, the, the angle of the camera. A Wi-Fi is for wirelessly importing images uh, or connecting to the camera via our free FLIR Tools app, uh, which will allow us to remotely capture images or view the camera remotely live or even control the camera remotely from our phones. Um, so if you want to put your camera on a tripod and control it from a different room, you could certainly do that and uh, also utilize the alarm features on the camera covered earlier in the video. Our Bluetooth capabilities are for our meter link technology, so uh, if we want to add a, a voltage or an amperage to an image, uh, we could certainly do that with our Bluetooth. Um, capabilities on the camera and on some of our multimeters, our digital multimeters and clamp meters. Um, then we have battery life and our storage capacity, uh, remaining storage capacity here on the top left. This is screen brightness, uh, which can be slid based on uh, what environment you're in. Uh, getting into our settings menu on the far right here, we have our connections. Uh, this is going to tell us a little bit about uh, our Wi-Fi and our Bluetooth. Uh, each camera has a specific password or passcode for uh, connecting to those devices. I have mine on to share so that when I turn my phone on and connect to the Wi-Fi, I can view my camera and connect to it as if it were a Wi-Fi network. Uh, if you want to see the settings of your camera, here's your password and your camera SSID. Uh, Bluetooth, again, is fairly simple. It's on off and you can, you can essentially pair two different devices. Uh, our camera temperature ranges, depending on the camera that you have, whether it's a T530 or 540 or some of the other cameras that we have, it's going to vary in temp range. Um, my standard uh, temperature range is going to be up to 248. Mine's set in Fahrenheit, um, and this has the capability to go up above 2700 degrees. Uh, when I change temperature ranges, you want to wait a second until it calibrates uh, to that specific range uh, as well. Our next one over. Uh, below, excuse me, is our save options. Um, we have some options as to how the images are going to be stored. Uh, preview image before saving. So if you're capturing a lot of images and you want to be able to make sure that you took a quality image before it actually saves, you can turn that feature on. Um, you can add an annotation. Uh, so this camera actually has a microphone on the bottom left corner and a speaker in the top left. So there's no need for our Bluetooth headsets anymore because you can record video right on board the camera without any of that. So you can add both a voice annotation or a text annotation, or you can write on the screen, uh, different things like that. Uh, image resolution, we have something called Ultramax technology, which is a resolution enhancement from our software. So if we capture an image, Ultramax will actually capture 15 to 20 other images and use uh, detail from all of those images and resolution pixels from those those images and store them all in one so that we uh, double our enhancement uh, our image enhancement once it gets to the software uh, we're gonna have to have that selected on board the camera and also when we import it to the software we want to make sure that we have it uh, imported as an ultramax um, uh, file our next one below is our video compression so this is going to be what our video is taken as an MPEG video, as you can see on the top, is nothing more than a video done in infrared. 
for first response and uh, search and rescue, they don't care about temperature data. They just want to see contrast on an image. That would be an MPEG file. Um, that'd be a, a home movie in infrared, if you will. Our, our next menu below is our radiometric storage or a CSQ file. That's our radiometric video recording that will allow us to extract live images from the video file. Uh, I have mine selected as that. And then we have some other options about storing JPEGs, um, uh, turning on our digital camera, our file formats, measuring distances, a lot of things that you can mess around with on your own cameras, not all that important. Um, and then you have uh, the ability to delete all the saved files. You definitely gonna wanna make sure you have them backed up before you do any of that stuff. Uh, our device settings, um, you know, for the most part, this is gonna be covering uh, your specific application and, and what language you're using, the time zone, uh, how you want your clock to show up, whether it's 24-hour clock or 12-hour clock, uh, your time in units. So if you're, you're doing it in uh, a Fahrenheit or centigrade, uh, if you're using metric or, or if you want to use feet and inches, uh, our focus. So this would be how we select our autofocus and continuous autofocus uh, if you didn't want to use the menu on the main screen. Our display settings, um, this is also something that I showed you right at the beginning where we can slide down and adjust some of these things, but this is also in our settings menu. Uh, these have GPS coordinates as well, so when you capture an image, it'll actually store GPS coordinates. Um, this camera, as well as our EXX series cameras, have the ability to do laser distance measurements. Uh, that laser distance measurement button or uh, laser on the camera is right below our our lens on the the manipulatable portion of the camera there's a what looks like a bright light if you hold that down it'll give us a laser uh, laser point on the the object that you're shooting and it'll also show you on the screen uh, your distance from the object well, that would need to be enabled if we get into that you can also use a flash um, when you're score, uh, storing an image as well or you can disable all of those if you have uh, the tendency to forget to turn your camera off. Uh, you can have an auto shutdown, uh, which is something that I typically use because when I go from site to site, if I don't turn it off, my battery very well might be dead by the time I get to my next site, which is obviously uh, not the ideal situation. Um, there's other user interfaces, face options that you can use. Again, these are different things that you can play around with on your camera um, to make it more uh, customized to your use. You have volume again so we were talking about being able to do a voice note on the camera if you want to play that back or if you have an alarm uh, beep enabled on the camera and you want to have a volume on that that can be adjusted on the camera. Uh, reset options and camera information if somebody asks you for your serial number, um, model number of your camera, what firmware you're, you're using, how much storage you have, those are all done in your camera information and some of your regulatory information. Um, we back out of all of this stuff. The only other thing that I want to get to on the camera is our image um, gallery storage. So we, we talked about this earlier in the video about how we can create different folders. Um, I have my top one here selected and I have another one that I can choose from. And as I click on that, it opens up all my images stored on here. If I back out, I can create another folder and name that folder whatever I want. I'm not going to do it right now, but um, these are some of the ones that I've created. I've created a pump folder before. Um, so if I had a pump route, so to speak, I could store all of my pump information in one folder or a motor or a gearbox or, or I could name them uh, based on the MCC room or a customer site. Uh, I'll leave that kind of up to, to your user preference, uh, but I just have some, some storage folders made up on the camera here. So as I tap them, you can see there's a button that says uh, active. That means that anything that I store will be stored in that folder. If I want to make another one active, I would have to select on that, uh, that specific folder. If I open up these images here, it looks like I have an image of a truck. If I go in, I have some options on what I can do from the camera uh, as opposed to doing it from the software or even when I'm holding the camera in front of an object. If I store an image, I can do a lot of different things after the fact from the camera that will allow me to, to analyze the image or, or uh, 
you know, put data or spots or text on an image so that when I store it into a report writing software, I have all the detail that I want so that um, I can dump it into a report right from the computer. Um, if I go up here in the top right, this will actually show us our visual image. So if I tap, it'll switch between the two. And if I hit this pull down men menu, I have another set of options up and down that I can edit images with. So if I tap this first one, this will allow me to add spots. A lot of the things that I covered earlier in the video, I can add boxes. I can move this around and find out what temperatures are what um, from an image stored on the, the camera. If I want to back out of here, I just discard the changes that I was making. The next one over is to dump an image. This is our camera information on the image. Um, so it'll tell us some, some uh, specific uh, coordinates, uh, the time, the date, uh, your emissivity settings. Our next one down uh, would be if we wanted to put a note to it, a text note to it, uh, we can type a note. And the next one is our voice note so I mentioned it has a speaker down here and a and a or excuse me a microphone down here and a speaker up here I can record my voice as I'm sitting here and select it and then when I go back I can actually play that if I wanted to so that when I dump it into the software it'll actually store that voice information with the image um, here we have some other parameters that we can set about the image that we have what site it was taken at the location on the site so that Again, when we dump potentially 100 to 200 or even more images back into a software, we don't have to remember everything about each image. We can do those things from the camera while we're still on site, so that it makes it a little easier once you get it to the software. Our next menu down is our sketch option, which will allow me to point to something and say I have a hot spot. Um, or write whatever you want on there. You could say loose connection, uh, uh, overload, clean connection, whatever you wanted to do on board the image. But allow you to make some notes so that when you get your image back to your computer, um, you're all set and ready to go. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe and hit the like button below. For technical support, product information, or if you'd like to understand how INE Technologies can help you, please visit our website or reach out to us directly. Thanks for watching.